What's up YouTube? Jail folks here. Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I've got my good friend Noah Kesselman here in the studio. He's got his Martin D35 with him today, and I've got my Gibson J45. You may have seen the last video we did together of the Gibson R9 versus the Custom Core H150 by Heritage Guitars. Uh, we own a bunch of different guitars and gear, so we decided to uh, make a lot of videos like this, comparing each other's different guitars and gear and uh, finding out, you know, the differences between some of the Gibsons and Martins and Heritage and different guitar brands like that. So today we got two like king guitars of the acoustic guitar industry. We have the Gibson J45, my acoustic guitar, and we have a Martin D35. So what we're doing today is going to compare some of the differences between these two guitars, some of the sound, some of the feel, and price point as well. So anyways, Noah, tell us a little bit about uh, your Martin D35. So this is a Martin D35, as JL was just saying, and uh, it is from what I believe to be 2015. And this one is technically called, if I'm looking in the sound hole right now, Martin D35 turns 50. So what that means is they did a bit of a 50th anniversary rerun of these things, made very similarly um, to how they were made when they were first began to be in the production line in 1965. A lot of great artists have used these, um, as they have with the J45. Um, to name a few, Eric Clapton was uh, recording with these and writing with these in the Derek and the Domino's years. Neil Young's played one of these. Um, Everyone. Everyone. Everyone's played. It's the Martin. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a little Every bit Every one different. of those guys, it's like they own both. You know, they have, yeah. they have, they have yeah. all of them because they, they all have their own sound. You know? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I was just, you know, listening to, listening back to our recording just now and hearing the two together, like the Gibson sounds more of like that uh, Robert Johnson type sound and then the Martin is more of that Clapton type sound. You Absolutely, know? And yeah. When, when we were playing the blues, at least that's what it kind of reminded me of. So it's, they're both really awesome guitars and I've been telling myself, this I've owned many Martins over the years, and the next acoustic guitar I'm going to get is going to be probably a Martin like this, a D18 or a D28 or there you go. or a D35. I mean, they're they're all awesome. And uh, look at the back of this guitar. Show them the back of it. So the back. So this is a really cool thing that the D35 has, as opposed to like some of their other models. They're similar, like the D28. So this has a three-piece back. Um, and back in the day, I'm not sure about this one, but back in the day, the middle strip right here was Brazilian rosewood. Mm -hmm. uh, and That's they did make some in 2015. Uh, I don't believe this is one of them, where the middle strip was Brazilian rosewood. I think they did a couple others with different rosewoods. Don't quote me on that, but yeah. I believe so. So Yeah. <laughs> you know. yeah. yeah, awesome, man. Yeah, yeah so that is a totally different, I guess, it's got a different shape than this. That's what you would call, I guess, a dreadnought, right? Yeah. That's a standard dreadnought And that shape. is too, but it has drop shoulders. Yes, yeah, so it's yeah, got yeah, the yeah. shoulders. If you notice, like with the J45, if you hold that one up, the body styles are just a little bit different. They're, they're close, and uh, looking at it, it looks like the J45 is a little bit thicker up here, but about the same down here as that. Yeah. So they're about depth wise are about the same too, but similar, yeah. You know. But um the slope shoulders is something you'll find on the J forty five. It's funny because the J forty five might even like the contour of the body might even look a little smaller. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It does. Especially like in the top. You know? mm -hmm. So uh, a little background on this J forty five. Um I got this one, I guess in 2015, I'm, I'm guessing, it was probably around then, and I had a, probably 2016, I had a good buddy of mine, and uh, he, he was a country singer, local country singer, he's like, you gotta get a J45, they're awesome, they're a workhorse guitar, you're gonna love them, they sound awesome, they play awesome, so I was like, alright, you know, like, I went into like a guitar store and played a bunch of different, I think it was a guitar center, and put a bunch of different acoustic guitars, and probably sat down with like 20 different acoustics, you know, and something about the J45 just kind of like blew all the other acoustics at that store, like out of the water. And 
and within my price point, because my price point was like a few thousand dollars. Gotcha. I mean, I had to get like a good acoustic, because I had owned like some other acoustics for, you know, half that and stuff, and they weren't quite doing it, you know? So I needed something good that I could gig with, especially doing like solo acoustic shows and stuff like that. So I got the J45, and one thing like, you know, I noticed right away with the feel is the neck feels really good and comfortable because I'm used to playing like Les Pauls and 335s and stuff like that. So the neck really felt like at home for me. And then obviously the big sound, you know, the J45 was like a game changer for me as well. You know, it comes with Grover tuners. That, that one's got Grovers too as well, right? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Which Grovers are pretty standard on a lot of guitars these days, but so you know, the, the J45 is also known as, you may not have known this, but it's it's the number one most recorded acoustic guitar of all I time. I did know that, yeah. Yeah, so like, for some reason, I and like some of the uh, big like studio guys I know, have, like that's all like they use is like a, like a Martin like that, or like a J45. So this guitar has been basically on all my recordings. I've written a lot of songs on this, probably like, the majority of my songs and I've played a lot of gigs with this thing and I've never cleaned it so it's got <laughs> all the blood sweat and tears that's why you probably see stuff all over it but I want this guitar to look pretty old one day and uh, be able to tell a lot of stories and start to get somewhere and it's a workhorse it plays and sounds just like the day I got it maybe even better now so that's a little bit a little bit of background behind my J45 but I want a Martin too, so that's that's next, you know. There you go. But uh, anyways, let's uh, let's uh, plug up these mics and uh, see what these guitars sound like. We're gonna just play on each other's guitars and you know compare them, compare them, talk about them a little bit afterwards. So here we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Alright YouTube, so that was the Martin D35 and the J45 played by both of us. Um, and that was going through, what kind of mic was that? So this is a Telefunk and Copperhead CU29 2 condenser microphone. So a good mic basically. <laughs> it's a good mic. It, it's actually funny though because it's not technically Telefunk in prices because a lot of people in the audio engineering world or, or the recording world, they think of Telefunk and they think, oh God, that's going to cost a pretty penny, you know, that's going to cost, you know, $10,000 or $14,000 or well over $5,000. And um, this was, uh, it wasn't cheap. Um, it definitely was a stretch for uh, my budget. Um, and I wanted it for a very long time, but I finally got my hands on one. And this was about $1,000, maybe a little bit more after tax and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but they give you a tube uh, power supply with it. And... Um, so you don't actually technically need phantom power for it, and uh, it's a great mic. I don't think I'll ever have to upgrade it. So Awesome, man. So both of these guitars are relatively close to the same price, which I didn't know. I thought that guitar was going to be more expensive. But uh, the J45 goes for about $2,800, $2,900, and you were saying the D35 goes for how much? So it ranges, um, so this is a 2015 model, so if you wanted to buy this specific one used, um, it would range from $2,500 to $3,000. Um, they went up uh, when I was, when I first got it, I think new this was about $2,500. Um, mm -hmm. But I think now new it would be closer to three. Yeah, and I think it was the same thing with this J45, because like when I bought this, it was closer to two grand, and now it's getting close to three grand as well. Sure. And I, I actually made a video on this guitar on this YouTube channel, and a bunch of people were like, I don't know where you got $2,200. And it's like, I could have sworn that that's how much they were back then in 2016. And the prices actually went up on both of these guitars. So. Yeah, it's a higher and demand. Yeah, there, so you said that was a 2015? Yes. Yeah, and this is like 2015, 2016. So both are pretty much the same age. <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah, so uh, some of the differences between these guitars, uh, what were your thoughts? Um, so I think this one's a bit more brighter, for sure. Yeah, um, I definitely got that vibe, too. Yeah, it was a little bit more bright, um, more accurate sounding. And then mm -hmm. the Gibson is much more warmer. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a very good guitar for strumming and playing chords if you're a singer. Mm -hmm. um, and you play guitar as well, you use that to accompany you, Gibson sounds great. Um, I also love the way this sounds when I'm singing. Um, so they're both great, just very different, very yeah. different animals. And, and it could be like what type of song you, you're doing. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. You know, I, I love a Gibson tuned down, like in drop D and stuff, and I love that mm -hmm. sound with the Martin too, but they're different, you know? Very different. And they're both great for blues, singing, songwriting, all that stuff. I mean, that was definitely like, the thought I, I got from the uh, the Gibson to it being warmer. And that that's what I think the J45 is kind of known for as well. And sure. I think that has a lot to do with the slope shoulders. It just the way it sits in a mix and everything. Yeah. And um, also the and, kind uh, of wood probably yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. That's mahogany, that's another thing right? we should talk about is yeah. I think this is all mahogany. So yeah. it's uh, spruce and mahogany. Yeah, spruce, right. spruce top yeah. and uh, all ma mahogany back and sides. So that's that's pretty much the J45, and and there's a really cool story about how the J45 uh, gets started and actually got started out of Kalamazoo in the original Gibson factory, and during World War II, I believe, um, it was all women that were building yes, this. Yes, I was part of that project. They did a yeah. wee project of that, the Kalamazoo Gals project. Yeah, like that was something yeah. that I heard about like a few years ago. Yep. And yeah, so that's one really cool thing about the J45s. But uh, anyways, thanks for uh, tuning in, guys. Um, one other thing I'd like to point out is um, this guitar has actual binding on the neck, and yeah. this guitar doesn't. So it's fancy. You do get that fancy binding with the with the Martin and the fancy wood. Rosewood. Yeah. Which makes it a bit more brighter. And yeah. More if you want a guitar to look really beautiful all the time, get the Martin. If you want a guitar where you could spill beer on it and cut your finger and get blood on it and <laughs> cry your eyes out and while you're writing a song you know this is a good workhorse guitar because you know that i would say that the um the look of the j45 definitely grew on me it wasn't like 
a guitar that I was like, man, visually, that's a beautiful looking guitar. But, you know, the more I look at it now, I think it is. I mean, not as much with all the gunk on it. I probably could clean some of the gunk off. But this guitar was going to be a workhorse. That's one of the reasons why I got it. And it's, it's great for in the studio as well. But definitely a lot of Martin in the future as well, too. I've, I've owned a few Martins myself, and I definitely want a Dreadnought like that, for sure. A Martin's what I call a one-shot deal. It so is, yep. This is my one and only. Yep, if awesome. You, yeah. All right, guys, well, check out my uh, buddy Noah Kesselman's YouTube channel and some of his music. He's a artist here in Nashville. We play together and do band stuff. He does his own thing. I do my own thing. He's a really awesome guitar player, musician. Check out his stuff. But uh, thanks for watching the video, guys. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.